Listen, Derek Mark joins us now on the eve of the NFL draft. First of all, you got to be pretty excited now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm, ex I'm excited. You know, I, I, I'm the type of guy you know I'm well grounded, so I don't want to get. I'm not too nervous or I'm not too excited. You know, the main thing is it's been so much of a heavy up and weight type type thing to. It's just like, uh, where am I going to have my job at? You know, where am I? What's my next location? And I guess most guys, when they're asked to say, I don't care where it is, I just want to play football. Is there a place you want to go or you're hoping or you just? No, I don't, I don't too much have a preference. You know, I, I may have a preference of, like, what type of scheme I like to play in or, or certain things like that. But, you know, it's, it's still football. You know, they all have fan base and they all have, you know, like players and coaches. So it's basically about the same. It's just like, what type of scheme would I be in? Sure. I mean, mm -hmm. did you did you foresee this? You know, a few years ago when you're starting to play football at Viger High School, you know, you're a <laughs> freshman or sophomore. Did you ever see this happening? I'm sure you dreamed it, but I mean, in reality, tomorrow you're going to be on an NFL roster, most likely. Oh yeah, man. That's the crazy part about it. Uh, going into college, well, actually in high school over at Viger, it wasn't like I didn't have the idea that I'm I'm gonna play college football. You know, for once at first and. Uh, as I got closer to that, once I got in college, I, I see a lot of guys and see what they went through mm -hmm. and get ready to play NFL ball. Then when it was my turn up, I'm like, man, it, it may happen to me. So, I mean, it's happened, and, you know, I take my blessings and I run with them. You know, I know I'm truly blessed. So, What's this process been like? You left Auburn a year early, mm -hmm. forego your senior year to make this move. What's it been like? I know, you know, you didn't get to come to the Senior Bowl because you weren't a senior, but mm -hmm. you've been all over the place. Tell me the teams you visited and what the whole process has been like. Uh, I only visited uh, Tennessee. I went up to Tennessee Titans. Uh, their complex, and I really liked it. You know, I like the, the vibe and, like, type mentality they got around the complex. You know, everything is open door. You can go in and talk to anybody. It's not, you know, it's not a such thing as, you know, you don't talk to coaches on a certain level. You know, it's every, everything is just out in the opening. So their complex was, like, a lot like ours at Auburn. You know, it was all open, speak how you want to speak and all that type of stuff. So I, I really enjoyed their complex. That's the only one I went to, you know, but I've worked out for the Patriots, the Colts, the Chiefs and the Falcons. What kind of feedback are they giving you? Uh, it, it's it's not like you know college and not like that. You know you don't you don't get feedback from you know, from the NFL. You know it may say a certain like say things to your agent, or it may call and say you know his, his workout went real good, or we like this about him, but we don't like this, and your agent will communicate with you. But other than that, they really don't give you much feedback. You know it's all if you like to watch mock, mock drafts and things like that. You know you can go and watch stuff like that, but. I'm not into it, so I'm just sitting back and waiting on the call. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing, yeah, the mock drafts will drive you crazy because I know a few months ago <laughs> you, you were, like, listed, you know, late first round. I think some of them had you going in the mid-20s. Mm -hmm. Now you look now, it's, like, second round. Some of them have you going in the fourth round. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that is? Why do you think in some eyes you've dropped a little bit? I know you had a hamstring issue at the combine. Mm -hmm. hamstring maybe slowed you down in the 40. What do you think has caused, caused that drop? Yeah, see, that, that's why I don't really get into mock drafts because, you know, guys who put – I can go and put up a mock draft. You know, guys who put up mock draft doesn't make picks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, certain guys who, who put them up, you know, they don't really know what type of person – like, overall, like, coaches like to see what type of person a, a guy is. You know, you you bringing them into your system. You don't want to mess your system up. Mm -hmm. So maybe that player is not fit for that coach or maybe that player is not, not, to, not do certain things that that coach might want. So – just by putting a player on a mock draft really doesn't mean that's where he's going to go. You know, those, those people don't make picks, and they really don't know the inside scoop of what goes on between coaches and how they like to make their picks. So I don't get into mock draft. So what will you do? I know you're in town to watch with your family tomorrow and, and perhaps on Sunday, too, to see what happens. But uh, what are you going to do tomorrow? Just, just hang out? Are you going to watch it or just, just wait for the phone call? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to sit around the house. Uh, I'm going I'm to watch it. You know, I'm going to watch piece, you know, bits and pieces of the draft. You know, I know my family going to cook since they love to cook. So <laughs> I'll be eating here, watching, you know, looking. You know, guys who I've hung out with, you know, they may get picked so I can get them sure. a call. Hey, congratulations, you know. Just talk to them about what, what's going what's gonna to happen within the next couple months. But other than that, I'm not going to do much. You know, I'm not going to go out, throw a big draft party. You know, I'm just going to sit at home and sit with my family and enjoy the moment. Uh, talk to me real quick. I know you decided to leave Auburn early. Was that a tough decision for you? I mean, now that you've gone through this process, you, you feel like you made the right Right decision. Yeah, you know, I, uh, when, when, when thinking about like what I was gonna do with, 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 with what was going on, I was talking with you know the coaches that were at Auburn before you know everything happened, and you know we talked and you know we had some nice nice discussions and you know a lot of, a lot of that stuff was based on the decision I made, but you know I don't I don't look back and I don't like I don't look back on what I did and say man I shouldn't have did it you know I you know I enjoyed the whole process and. You know, I would, I, I, I look back sometimes and be like, man, I wonder what Auburn still like. You know, I had another year. I could have been back. I should, I could have been there. Went to the A-Day game. Like, man, I could have been still playing. But, I mean, sooner or later, you know, my day was going to be over at Auburn. You know, so whether it was this year or next year, you know, my day was going to be over. And I was going to still have to go through the same process. So, 
I just look at it as uh, what, I, what I was doing. You know, I believe it was time to move up to another level of football. What made you think that it was time for you to go? I mean, obviously you, you were all SEC player, dominated at times in, in games. Is that is that was, is it strictly just like you know I'm ready to go in terms of my game, or was it you know was it, were there more issues involved there? What what was the ultimate factor? Uh, that was mainly probably the main reason because like I, I suffer. Uh, two ankle injuries like uh midway through the season mm -hmm. so before the before middle of the season like within those well, a couple games like five games i had like crazy like stats number wise so i was and i like to, i like to see what what my competition is doing around like the whole in, in, entire ncaa so by watching things like that from game five when i got hurt up until like game nine or ten you know guys was just now numbers was just now getting to where my numbers were you know so i was figuring that Man, I mean, the game the game is not hard. You know, it, it's, it's not – like, the competition level is not like it used to be when I first got to Auburn. So, you know, I was figuring that maybe, you know, maybe it was my time to move up to another level, you know, go get a better competition. What's the one thing you're most excited about as a being a being a pro? Uh, besides besides the money. Oh, come on. That ain't, that <laughs> That's ain't, too easy. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> no, nah, you know, the money, great. But uh, other than that, you know, it's just going to be that I'm going to – I look at it as I'm, I'm a professional at, at what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like uh, like if you go to college and you got a, a bachelor degree, once you get your master's, now you feel like you're better than what you was at your bachelor degree. You just feel like you're smarter. So while you're playing on a professional level, you know, you feel like you the top of the top that, that play that game. You know, so you know, I feel like I'm the – I'm the top doctor, you know. You know, the top doctor can walk around and he don't even say much no more. You know, when he used to, when he used to do like little doctor job, he talked to everybody. Now he just walk around, go in the room, do what he got to do, and he leaves. So, you know, I, I feel great about myself. You could pay a bunch of assistants to call you Doctor Marks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> while, while we talk money, what, is you have something that maybe on the wish list you'd like to get first? You know, once you get that contract. Nah, I really don't, no. man. My first, my first thing, you know, I'm the oldest child of eight, you know, so I, my first thing is to like my immediate family, you know, make mm -hmm. sure every everything's straight. And it's, it's not, it's not the fact that, you know, I got enough money I can take care of everybody because, I mean, if you if you paying out more than what you got coming in, you're gonna eventually go broke. So, it's just, you know, it's just a point about being comfortable, you know, being able to help other people, not just being able to do what I want to do with my money, just being able to help other people. You know, I got my my I was in uh, majoring in uh, rehabilitation and special education, and my thing was. You know, to help, uh, like, counsel and mentor alternative kids, juvenile delinquents, and they also work with children with disabilities. So if I can start a solid foundation on that, you know, that can branch off and that can be helpful for a lot of people, really what I like to do, you know, help out others. That's a great idea. I appreciate it. Oh, First yeah, no class problem. Guy. No problem. Thanks for coming by, Sanderek. We hope we hear your name early on Saturday. I hope so, too. <laughs> All right, best of luck. Sanderek right, Marks thanks. heads to the NFL Draft.